Hey, what is your favorite new feature from the recent Resolve 18.5 update? I'm curious. And mine for sure is the new Relay tool, which you can find in the Fusion page and in the color page of DaVinci Resolve 18.5. And that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about today. I'm gonna to show you how to set everything up properly. I'm gonna show you how to use all of those custom controls and I'm gonna show you how you can get the most out of this tool. But first, let's check out some before and after images. The first step that we're gonna do is we're gonna add two more serial nodes right here. Drag the second one down just to have a little bit more space. And on the first one, and this is a crucial step that all of the tutorials that I've just watched on the Relight tool are missing out completely. And according to Blackmagic Design, in their user manual, you will get the best results if you isolate your subject from the background. If you have access to the Relight tool, you can easily do that by going to your Magic Mask feature in the toolbar down here. Then we're gonna switch from object to person, and then we're just gonna draw a stroke around our person like that. Hit Shift and H to see what we've selected, and that's a pretty good selection right here. So I'm gonna hit Shift H once again. Now, usually you would track this back and forth, but for this tutorial, I'm just not gonna do that because it would take way too long. As you can see, we have isolated our subject from the background, and that is because we only wanna relight our subject. We don't want any light to spill onto the background. On the second node right here is where we drag on the relight effect, and the only thing that this node is here for is to create a surface map, to output a surface map. So go to your effects library in the top right corner and just select output surface map. So this this node right here only caches our surface map. And onto the third node, we're gonna drag the relight effect once again. Now we have to connect everything up properly, so we're gonna go to our first node right here, gonna grab the green output and connect it into the first green input. Then we're gonna grab the alpha output right here and we're gonna grab it into the first key input into the blue arrow right here. Then we're gonna go down to our node number two right here. We're gonna grab the green output and we connect it into the second green input. So now we have connected everything properly, but we have to change the surface map, use internal to use input two because we are not using or creating an internal surface map on node number three right here. Instead, we're using the surface map that is created by node number two. So node number three right here, you can see that we have three light sources. We have a directional light source, we have a point source, and a spotlight source. And if you select them, you can see the differences in a light that they're creating. And for this shot right here, I'm gonna use the directional light. So under light properties, we have two sliders that we can change, the brightness and the contrast slider. So the brightness slider controls the strength of any grading that is applied to the scene. This does not add brightness changes on its own, but it amplifies the changes you make in the grading tools later on in the grading process, and we will get to that. And I can confirm that by deactivating the map preview and playing around with the brightness slider, and as you can see, nothing is changing within the scene. The contrast slider controls the size of the light emitter, effectively determining how harsh or gentle you want the gradient between light and dark. And if we go to our viewer, you can now grab those rays right here, and you can change the lighting position from left to the right. But if I'm gonna deactivate everything, you see in the bottom left side, we have those orange light source. So I'm gonna activate this one more time and I'm gonna drag it over to the left side because the light is coming from the left side. So we're gonna use that to emulate our lighting. And I want the contrast to be just a little bit less. So I'm gonna drag this down, very subtle, something like that. Then I'm gonna deactivate the relighting map preview. I'm gonna come over to my viewer and I'm gonna change this to off. Then I'm gonna come over to my primary wheels and in here I'm gonna raise my gain to around 1.5. Then I'm gonna raise my gamma just a little bit, something like that, and I'm gonna increase the saturation to around 55. And what I wanna do now, because the light in the scene is more on the orange side, I wanna subtract a little bit of blue in my gain wheel, something like that. And then I wanna add a little bit of red to get this like golden look. And when I deactivate the node and reactivate it, you can see that we have efficiently relit 
or subject. So in my opinion, this is already looking super good, but you might be thinking, well, why not just use a regular power window and make the changes within there? The Relight tool allows you to make more realistic and natural lighting effects to your scene. Unlike a simple like power window, which lightens everything in its boundaries equally, the Relight creates a surface map that analyzes the perceived depth and directions of your objects in your 2D image. So that's exactly what is stated in Resolve's user manual. So if you want to take a look at that, I'll link that in the descriptions of this video. And now take a look at the viewer while I'm playing around with the brightness slider. So you can see that I can use the brightness slider after I've done any grading to the scene to enhance the lighting or to decrease it a bit. The brightness slider does not add any brightness changes on its own. You have to be using the grading tools to use the brightness slider effectively. Now let's move on to the second shot right here. And there I'm not going to use the magic mask, but I'm going to add two more nodes. I'm going to drag this one down. And on the second one, I'm going to drag the relay tool and I'm just going to output a surface map. On the third node, I'm going to drag in another relay tool and then I'm going to connect it the way I previously did. But we don't have to connect our key output because we haven't keyed out anything. So first up, I'm going to change the surface map from use internal to use input two, and I'm going to use the point source for this, I'm going to drag it over to the right side of my subject, something like that. And then I want to make the reach just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to decrease it right here, something like that, because I want this to be more of a kicker light that comes in from the background onto the head of my subject, then I'm going to deactivate the lighting map preview, I'm going to come down to my primary wheels, and I'm going to increase the gain just a little bit. And I'm going to increase the gamma. But as we can see, the lighting is more on the green side. So I'm going to add a little bit more green in my gain wheel, something like that, then I'm going to increase it a little bit more and just add a little bit more saturation to that. So and now if I bypass the color grade, you can see that we're effectively relighting her back head right there and the side of her head like this. But now I feel like that's just a little bit too harsh. So what I can do is I'm going to go to my brightness slider. And I'm just going to lower that ever so slightly to around 0 0.8. And now this looks super good. And this could have totally been shot like this. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you learned something new. If so, please consider leaving a like and a comment that will help me out a ton. And it would really make my day. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'm going to be seeing you next week. Bye.